Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Taramina, and we are outside in the Dragon State in the confines of beautiful Dragon Stadium. I'm here with my guest, Coach Blackstock. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Awesome. Um, before we start, I wanted to introduce you. Uh, how long you've been coaching varsity football? Uh, this will be my 24th year overall in Lake Orion, my fifth year as head coach. That is awesome. Um, I wanted to, if I could, I wanted to recap the 2020 season. It was a very much a COVID year um, where they had everybody make the playoffs and it was, um, and everybody had six regular season games. In our case, we played five. Sure. Um, we finished the season three and three. Um, we had a nice win to start off our season against Oak Park. Oak, it was 38 to six. Then we traveled down to UAD Jesuit to play the Cubs, and that was a really good game, seven to six at on, their place. On a moment's notice, right? Yes, on a yep. moment's notice because of a COVID cancellation. Yep. And then um, we played. Then we played um, Clarkston. That was suffered our first loss of the season, thirty-one to seven. Yep. And then um, played Farmington for a crossover, one thirty-five to seven. And then played West Bloomfield that regular season game. The score was a lot. Was a, it was a lot tougher than the, the, the score indicated. It was a, even though we lost to West Bloom, it was still a really good game at their place. Yeah, you know, it was a great game uh, all the way into the fourth quarter. And then, you know, I think we had like really a, a five to six minute time span mm -hmm. that uh, we just, we really struggled. And, and they made great plays and excelled and, and kind of blew it, blew it open at that point. Mm -hmm. And then we went into the playoffs with um, we played a really good Grand Blank team at their place, yep. and that game could have went either way. Yeah, you know, uh, a great program in Grand Blank and, and a great game, you know, that really went down to the wire. Uh, honestly, one that we feel that we, we should have won. Um, but you know, credit credit to them, they made some big plays when they needed to, and uh, and got the victory. Let's recap. Let's recap the 2020 season as a whole. You um, you had some really really good players. Um, you still do. Um, scored 101 points, and then we also had 106 points given up. But still, the schedule, that's a very, very tough schedule with a six-week season. Uh, could you recap the 2020 season? Yeah, you know, it, it was uh, obviously a, a, a challenge because of what was going on in, in the world uh, with the pandemic and uh, had to do things very differently. But, you know, I think like everyone, uh, we found some things that we were forced to do that we're going to continue with because we found that it was just more efficient and, and effective and, and really worked out well. But, you know, to recap the season, uh, three and three, obviously we, we want to win them all. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm, I'm really proud of our seniors and, and the juniors that were on the team, uh, just of how they were so flexible and dealt with all the ups and downs of starting the season, stopping the season, mm -hmm. um, the challenges within the season of, you know, having to wear a mask and, and all of the things that went along with the pandemic, uh, I look at it as, as it was a success, mm -hmm. even though maybe record-wise we're not happy with that. Um, overall, in the, the grand scheme of high school sports and, you know, trying to teach young men lessons and develop them as men, I, I think we did a great job mm -hmm. of that, you know, uh, because they were so receptive to it. Mm -hmm. I remember you saying, telling them how proud you were of them, especially because that was a very, very resilient group that you had and in many ways you still have with those players that are Yeah, here. you know, we, we, we kind of stole it from Urban Meyer when he was at Ohio State, the E plus R equals O formula mm -hmm. of event plus response equals outcome. And we don't try not to focus on the event, put more focus on our response to those events. And I thought last year's team did a great job of that. You know, and the, the programs we lost to, the three teams, Grand Blank, Clarkston, and West Bloomfield, outstanding programs, mm -hmm. outstanding players, um, really always perennial contenders mm -hmm. to be in the run for for a state championship and mm -hmm. we don't want to lose to them but i also don't think there's there's shame in losing to them when you lose to great programs like that yes um can you talk about ero real quick what that is what people don't yeah so you know it's just it's really trying to put a focus on um our response as individuals or as a team collectively focusing on how we respond to events whether that event is a negative event or a positive event in our life because our response to that event is what affects the outcome um, we can't control the events as much as we would like to and want to control events in our life mm -hmm. we don't but we do always control our response 
and we can't completely change the outcome, but our response uh, determines the positiveness of that outcome, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that we try to teach the, the, the kids in a football sense, but also always try to relate it to life beyond football and outside of football, whether it's school, whether it's relationships at home or with, uh, with friends, or whether it's, you know, at some point, their job, you know, they're going to go through adversity and challenging times and have negative events in their life. And we're trying to give them an opportunity in football to practice that response to adversity so that when it hits in real life, they've got some experience with it. And hopefully they remember for the rest of their life that E plus R equals O. Point well taken. I want to talk about the 2021 season. Um, obviously, I want to mention what are the team strengths this year and what are the team challenges? Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're really excited about 2021. Um, weaknesses, I, I don't know if I would say we have weaknesses. I think our challenges mm -hmm. uh, going into this season aren't really different than any other year in high school football. Mm -hmm. um, but putting a little more emphasis on building relationships within the team, how quickly this team can come together mm -hmm. and, and really get to know each other. It's, it's really pretty shocking even to me after 24 years how you know, 65, 70 guys that have gone to school in the same school district really because our district is so big don't fully know each other on a real personal level so that's been a focus this summer and it will continue to be a focus in in august of getting them to know each other on a personal level really off the field so they can perform well on the field because that relationship is so important you know you talk about our schedule uh, and we're excited about our schedule but we also recognize that you know there are great programs on there and there's going to be times that we get off the bus or look across the field and there's going to be teams that are more talented than us mm -hmm. you know they'll have kids with more offers and more stars next to their name mm -hmm. but how we how we combat that is by having great team chemistry mm -hmm. and building that relationship so the guys play for each other not mm -hmm. just for themselves because you always give more of yourself when you're playing for someone else you know that's so that that's one of our you know um points of focus and, and then back to the whole how we respond to adversity because we're going to have adversity during every game we're going to have adversity throughout the season so those two areas are, are the areas that we're working on and I guess it's not a weakness it's just a, an area of right. focus as I mentioned with challenges rather than weakness absolutely and more. you know in our strengths yep. um, we've got three returning offensive linemen and Trevor Witt Daniel Babcock and, and Jonah Fix so we feel really good where we are offensive line wise. We're still trying to find those two guys to, to step in. Um, but at the same time, we've got a lot of young guys that are, that are doing a great job right now. And um, I, I'm pretty confident we're gonna find, you know, five guys up there and, and a couple backups that are gonna do a really nice job for us offensive line wise. Um, you know, another strength of ours is I think that our skill kids, we have a number of them, probably six, seven, eight of them, that run really well, um, run better than we probably have in the past. We've always had a couple kids that run really well, um, but now I just, we have more of them. So I think we have more weapons mm -hmm. to be able to spread the ball around more um, and not just focus on one or two guys that were kind of the key main guys. Right, that's good. Um, I wanted to, last thing before we, um, We'll go to the second segment is um, obviously the big challenge one another challenge is going to be the COVID protocol um, obviously we we had teams cancel games um, because of COVID we've had um, situations are you prepared for those types of situations or is any of the athletic department yeah you know um, it, it's hard to say you're prepared for it because mm -hmm. as everyone is experiencing it, you know the, the stuff kind of changes week to week or even day to day and sometimes hour to hour, right? right? And luckily in the last few months, there hasn't been much, you know, change. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're fingers hearing crossed. that we're, yeah, fingers crossed and uh, on our knees with a little prayer yeah. every night, right? But uh, it, it sounds like right now we're gonna be able to start really pretty normal. Mm -hmm. um, I say that, but I think we've also learned a lot and, and we still try to keep some of those protocols in our head of, hey, let's just make sure we spread out. You know, when we come in and we take a knee at the end of practice or during practice, we still try to spread out a bit. Um, you know, no, there isn't like the, the mandate of wearing a mask, right. but we're all very conscious of trying to keep that distance. Right. And, and if we do have to go back to wearing masks, you know, it's, we're gonna focus on our response and not, mm -hmm. uh, not on the event. Um, and, and we'll, like last year, 
we'll find a way to do it. You know, I thought our program, our kids, uh, our coaches did a great job. We had that one unfortunate uh, yeah. having to, to cancel the Oxford game, yeah. which, you know, was hard on everyone, especially yeah. the kids. Um, but that was just really out of being extra cautious, mm -hmm. which, you know, our district and our program will always do. Um, so I, I'm not concerned about it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I want to just be able to roll like we always have and not have, you know, many guidelines and protocols. But if we do, I know we'll adjust and be able to handle it quickly and easily. All right. Um, when we come back, we're going to have the players and the coaches come on on the Lake Orion football preview show on ONTV. ONTV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7 Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team, which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Taramina. I'm with some of the players for Lake Orion Football. Um, I'm going to start with Kyler. Introduce yourself to you guys. Oh, I'm Kyler Carson. I'm a senior. I'm Joey Theed. I'm also a senior. I'm Ethan Strand. I'm also a senior. Uh, I'm Daniel Babcock. I'm as well a senior. I'm Nazir Lardell, 12th grade. Stephen Brown, also in the 12th grade. Awesome, guys. Um, what position do you guys, what position do you guys play? I'm going to start with Steven. Uh, wide, receiver. Oh. wide receiver, DB, uh, kick return, pump return. Nice. I play um, running back and linebacker. Uh, O-line and D-line. Uh, I play quarterback. I play defensive line and also tight end. Uh, I play uh, linebacker and H-back. All right. Um, how long have you guys been playing varsity and sub-varsity? I'm going to start with Ethan. So I've been playing for uh, the whole career, or for the all, all four years, um, freshman, JV, and then varsity for the last two years. Yeah, my freshman year I played on freshman, and then sophomore year I started at varsity and then went on to this. Oh, I started last year and then this year also. Uh, I played freshman my freshman year, and then my sophomore and junior years I started on varsity. Um, sophomore year, halfway through, um, I moved up to varsity, and then last year, and now this year. Uh, I started off on freshman, and then uh, my sophomore year, I played and started on varsity for the rest of my high school career. All right, guys. Um, what is something unique about yourselves? Um, Steven, I'm going to start with you again. I'm picking on you. No, that's cool. I uh, uh, just transferred in this semester. Nice. Um, nothing really crazy. Just competitive and want to win. Uh, I'm a guy that wants to be the best at everything I do, and I work hard to achieve that. Yeah, mine would also probably be uh, working hard and doing the things when nobody else is watching to get better and trying to get everybody else to be the best they can be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm same with him. I love the integrity. That's my big thing. And I love just help out of my teammates and make them feel better. Yeah, I like to be a leader on the team. Uh, same with everyone else. Like, just work hard and uh, lead by example. Okay, um, I want to mention who has impacted you the most, and this can be anyone, okay? I'm going to start with um, Daniel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, for me, it would probably be my dad because he's the one who really got me into football, and he also made sure that I was doing everything to be the best football player that I can be. Um, I'd also say my dad. Um, I've been playing football probably since I was six, so he just um, made me work hard and keep pushing me. Uh, honestly, I have to say both of my parents, they both push me to do the best I can. My stepdad, Paul, makes sure I'm always straight uh, in the football field, and my mom always makes sure I'm mentally straight. Uh, my biggest influence in life is probably my sister. Uh, she plays college softball, and she's also going on to be a pediatrician, so she's juggling med school and everything, and just her determination and her work ethic is unmatchable. Yeah, so I'd have to say someone who influenced me would be Kyler's dad, uh, Dale Carson. Uh, he always taught me a bunch of life lessons and taught me um, what I need to know about the next level for football. 
Uh, same with everyone else. I, I look up to my dad a lot. He, ta he taught me a lot of things, uh, like just about life and football and whatever. Um, so yeah, I'd say my dad. Okay, um, one thing I do want to bring up is um, you guys have been, how have you guys been preparing for this, this off season? How have you guys been, um, how have you guys been approaching this off season? So we've been approaching this off season. We've definitely been lifting way more than we would um, starting earlier in the season or starting earlier in the summer than we would have. And another thing that I noticed is just the entire mood in the weight room and on the field is completely different. Everybody's more energetic. Everybody's got a ton of energy and it's just super contagious and it's flowing off on everybody. Yeah, so early in the season, we've started doing install a lot more. So everyone's starting to get down all the plays and we're more um, ready coming into the season. I think we're just having more fun. Uh, like last year, I mean, it's football, you have fun, but I just feel like we weren't that much of a team, and that's why we didn't have too much success. Uh, but this year, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely a team. Um, I think we're having just a lot more fun. We're like, we're playing games, and we're just joking around a lot more. It's just a more fun environment. Uh, like Ethan said, we're definitely more of a team this year. We're a lot closer than the teams I've been on years past. And uh, also with less COVID restrictions now, we've been able to like really do a lot more stuff with each other and get to know each other more. Fingers crossed on the COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, like my teammates said, um, I think the brotherhood is just unmatched. And we all have a really good bond. And we worked hard, like worked harder than ever this summer. And hopefully it will pay off. Uh, I think everybody's mindset has changed. Everybody wants to win, and nobody wants to go home empty-handed, so everybody's hungry. Okay, how, the importance of being a mentor to the younger kids, how much does that mean to you guys? I want to start with Daniel. I'm going to start with you. Uh, it means a lot because I know that someday when I come back here, when I'm not playing anymore and I'm sitting in the stands, I'm going to be watching those kids that uh, I was, you know, teaching and just talking to on uh, during our youth camp. So it means a lot to, for the continuation of Lake Orion football. Um, when we were little guys and the high school players would coach us, it was really big to us and we really looked up to them. So just paying it back is like really big and makes you feel good. Uh, I got a lot of younger siblings and people that look up to me, so I know being the best that I can, they really look at us as heroes. So at the end of the day, that's all it's about. Um, I definitely have to agree with Nas with what he said about they come to these games and they look up to us like we're these giants. And as Coach Blacksock has said, they don't they can't tell the difference between high school, college, and NFL. So when they come out here and we get to work with them, it can make their week, their month, whatever. And then especially on game nights when we get to see them when we're running out of the tunnel or at least just go up to them and give them a high five for the 30 seconds that we're with them, it makes their day. So, Yeah, it really is such a big thing to them. And it makes them want to come out and do the things that they do like we do. Um, when they see us, they want to be like us. So when we go and mentor them and help them out, it makes them want to do what we do. I think it's important because I've had people like, uh, just to name a few, I'd, I'd say Brock Iwanski and uh, Ashton Curl, they helped me so much just developing as a football player. And you know, I want to pass that on to like the younger kids so that they can just be just as good uh, and develop just as much as me. The Lake Orion tradition. Uh, Ethan, I'm going to start with you. Um, what does that mean to you? Uh, well, so, okay, I, so when I was a young kid, I would come to these games and just everyone, like, you couldn't even walk anywhere. I just, tradition, I think it's a very rich tradition. Um, I think the fans help a lot with that. Like, it's so nice to, you know, come out. We didn't really get that last year, but we still had people, like, fighting for tickets and stuff. We, we got 100 tickets out. People would, like, pay money to get the tickets, like, pay a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to have the uh, fan base that we have, and, and I think that goes with the tradition. It's just been a tradition at Lake Orion to have uh, like a bunch of fans at the uh, football games. Uh, it just shows how much of a family Lake Orion is and how close everyone is and how we can all come together each Friday night and celebrate something that we love. Um, to me, I believe that the tradition is the fans putting in it putting in as much energy as the team gives back to the fans, not just the fans showing up and expecting this of the team. They know that they're going to show up and see the players work as hard as they can for as long as they can.
Yeah, like they said, it's a great tradition. We have a great fan base. Like when we're running out of the tunnels a lot for most games, I'm, I get chills when we're running out because I just hear everyone, you know, screaming for us. And then when they're all making noise and you can be, barely hear your teammates talking on the field, that's just great for uh, all the players and all the fans. And that's why I just love the Lake Warren tradition. I would have to agree. Um, just like everything, some kids um. Brain fart. Sorry. Um, okay. Some kids, they their whole week, they're waiting on Friday night to come here and just watch the players play, and they really look up to it. Uh, I'm kind of new here, so I'm not 100% sure what everybody does or how it's repping. But the way it's been looking so far, everybody's really serious about game day, and as a community, it looks like everybody comes together and to celebrate everybody doing their thing so it looks like it's, it's gonna feel nice to come out here and play for the player play for the stands and for each other so all right well, um i have two more questions guys what's your take about the schedule this season steven i want to start with you <clears throat> this is a new schedule to me so my old schedule my old school didn't even look nearly as tough as this new one so uh i love the opportunity to come out here and compete with new players and see how I match up against the best um our coach um, harps on taking it one game at a time. So for the most part, we're just looking at Utica Eisenhower. They're a really tough team, and um, hopefully we battle pretty well. Uh, you know, we're playing in the OA, the OA Red, which is, uh, I believe, undoubtedly the best conference in the whole state of Michigan. There's just so much talent to be found at all of these schools. And, uh, you know, even our out-of-conference games, like we opened with Ike, they're a great team, beat us in the playoffs a couple of years ago. And uh, I just can't wait to get back on the field against them and try to get some revenge. Uh, I honestly just can't wait. You look at the teams that we're playing this year, you got Utica Ike, you got Oxford, you got Clarkson. All these schools have been powerhouses for football for the past 30 years. And then you got us also, we've been a powerhouse for football. So I'm just excited to see how this all goes. Yeah, we got a lot of challenges to face ahead. We got a lot of good teams to go against, but we just got to go up and compete. Yeah, this, uh, this year we don't have any, like, I'd call them cupcakes. Like, there's no gimme games. I don't think uh, I can see us losing any of the games. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really going to have to focus every week and just show up and, you know, play hard every week. What are you guys' expectations for the season? I'm going to start with Ethan. Well, we expect to win. Um, I expect to win most of those games. Uh, and I expect us to play a lot harder than we did last year because I feel like we gave up in certain games. So I think that's uh, some of the stuff that we can expect. I expect, expect us to grow each week. I expect us to face adversity and get through it and thrive. Um, I expect us to give it 100% effort all the time and then also work on the minor details that nobody would pay attention to because the minor details are what, in the long run, make up the major details, and that's what I'm excited for also. Uh, I expect us playing a lot of physical games. We're going to be a very physical team with a hard-nosed defense and a great run game and pass game on offense. And I just expect us to go out there and just surprise a lot of people by just how physical we are and how well that we can move and everything and make plays. Um, we're a very hungry team, so of course I'm ready to win. But I think when you lose, that really teaches you the life lessons and how to, like, I expect us to go out and compete and basically just dog everybody that we go against at the end of the day. So you can't be kitty catty against everybody and expect to go into playoffs and dominate. So I expect us to surprise a lot of people. All right, thank you guys for thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. I really really appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to talk to the coaches on the Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ON TV. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. 
Welcome back to the Korean Football Preview Show on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina, and um, I've got two coaches with me. i got Coach Powell. Hello, Anthony. How are you doing? Great. Wonderful. And i got Coach Dabrowski, who will be with me for the next two segments. Awesome. Great to be here today. Awesome. Um, coach Powell, I want to... Um, um, what position do you coach? I coach the tailbacks, and I'm the offensive coordinator for nice. the varsity team. Nice. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, 40. Nice. <laughs> what does Lake Orion mean to you? Well, it means we, first of all, have a great community support. We've got a great administration, and we've got great coaches to work with and outstanding players to work with. Awesome. Dan, I'm going to ask the same question. What does Lake Orion mean to you? Uh, well, from my perspective, I'm uh, also a school teacher in the district. Mm -hmm. um, both of my kids are eight going into third grade in the district. So mm -hmm. as a coach and a parent um, and a teacher in the district, it's just uh, it's that family. This is uh, this is where we live. And, you know, this is where I, you know, I want to <laughs> coach and teach. And so. How much has Coach Black Sock meant to you? Uh, he's, he's given me the opportunity to come out here, which has been a blessing. And uh, so I, I'm thankful for that. And I also get the opportunities to coach with my son. So that's awesome as well. Rick Powell, who's a defensive coordinator. Can you, can you talk about Rick and what he does? Uh, well, Rick runs a defense. I got the opportunity. He played for me at Warren Cousin back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he also coached with me at Anchor Bay. And then he came to Lake Orion. And now I'm following him. That is awesome. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Very thankful to be here. Awesome. Um, Coach Dombrowski, how much does Coach Black Sox mean to you? Uh, can I can I put an amount on it? Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I can. Uh, Coach, <laughs> Coach Blackstock and I, I, I always tell him, I tease him, he's like, he's my ride or die. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just uh, having a, a great friend like John, uh, you know, to coach with, to be mentored by, I think it's, uh, it's just awesome. I mean, I, I don't think uh, there's a better head coach in, in the state of Michigan. Something unique. Coach Paul, I'll start with you. Something unique about you. Unique. Well, I think one of the things is I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, the reason I continue to do it is because I love working with kids. Coach Dabrowski? Uh, unique about me. Uh, probably, you know what, I, going back to, uh, you know, my first answer is that, uh, you know, I'm pretty much all in for Lake Orion. I know, uh, you know, you and your brother are all in for Lake Orion, and I just think mm -hmm. about, uh, I met my wife here in Lake Orion teaching. My mm -hmm. kids go here. I coach here. So it's just, uh, you know, the Lake Orion is pretty much what I know. Um, what strengths do you see in the, in the offense this year? Well, we got some great returners. We got some, a uh, couple offensive tackles that are very, very good football players. I'm pretty sure they've started in the varsity since they were sophomores. Uh, we got a returning quarterback who's a give, good leader. Uh, we have a couple returning running backs, so we're very excited in the direction the offense is going right now. Mm -hmm. What about the defense? Well, I'm not really sure. I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for for Rick, right. but I know he's excited. I know mm -hmm. he's had to replace probably uh, maybe two thirds of the defenders mm -hmm. that from last year. But uh, so far, so good. We're looking at them. They're doing a great job, and they're uh, very excited to be out there. That's awesome. Um, also, what, what challenges do you guys expect? Obviously, I'm speaking more about varsity than the sub varsities. We'll get to the sub varsities in the next segment. Mm -hmm. um, the, what challenges do you guys have on the offensive side of the ball? Well, right now, it's the challenge is we're starting a new offense and a new system, so getting the kids to learn the system. But obviously, we've been, we've been going at this for a while, and the kids are getting better and better every day, so that's exciting. And uh, we feel very exciting once the kids do finally pick up the offense because we do feel like we have a lot of weapons in the backfield and a great offensive line. What are the expectations for this upcoming season? Well, the expectations, we tell the kids, give their best effort every day, and good things will happen to those who work hard. Awesome. You have any any thoughts, Coach? No, I like Coach Powell's answer. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll be right back with the Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ON TV. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ON TV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is twenty five dollars per person which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. 
Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina, and I'm here with Coach Blackstock again. It's great to be back again. And Coach Dombrowski again. Great to be here. Awesome. Um, I wanted, before we start talking about the sub varsities, I wanted to fill in the gaps about the other coaches, the coaches who weren't here. Um, Coach Blackstock, could you give me a description about the other coaches who are not here? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've got some familiar faces on the varsity staff and, uh, and, and some new faces. You met mm-hmm. Coach, Coach Bowell, who's our offensive coordinator. Uh, we also have Coach Kara Gosian, who's our mm-hmm. varsity offensive line coach and uh, teaches physical education at Stadium Drive mm-hmm. and Carpenter Elementary. Uh, we have Coach Reed, who uh, is our halfbacks coach. Mm-hmm. I played with Coach Reed at Central Michigan. Um, so excited to have him join our staff. We have Coach Jennings, who Coach E, everybody knows Coach E, uh-huh. uh, coaching tight ends. Um, and then on the defensive side, of course, we have uh, Rick Powell, our defensive coordinator, who teaches math at the high school. We have Brian Gannon back, who is our varsity defensive line coach. Troy Anderley, who mm. you know pretty well. Oh yeah, it's the uh, 06 brotherhood. Yep, Troy played played for us back in uh, in 06. Yep. And uh, then we also have Jamie Witt, who coaches linebackers for us. You know, and then our JV staff, since we don't have mm. any of them here today because of work obligations, uh, Coach Booker, Vinny Booker is back, mm-hmm. former Dragon, great, yep. outstanding defensive back and baseball player, teaches physical education at the high school. Mm-hmm. We have Kyle Larson, another yep. Dragon alumni back, calling our JV offense. Uh, Jeff Smart, who is our varsity uh, wrestling head coach, yep. is back working with the offensive line, defensive line. And Terry Firestein, who's been around the program for good grief as, as long as I can remember, um, working with our JV team as well. That's awesome. That's a great staff there. Let's talk about another great staff, the freshman staff. Um, coach Dombrowski, you're the head freshman coach. Explain yep. a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm the head freshman coach for Lake Orion. I also do the offensive line. Um, helping me on the offensive line this year is Jeff Konselik, who has uh, been with the program for, again, a number of years mm-hmm. um, going through. Um, our, we have a new uh, secondary coach in um, Andrew Helm, who's uh, coming over um, this year with us. Um, Russ Purdy, who was our defensive coordinator last year, mm-hmm. is uh, moving to our offensive coordinator this year. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, he was an awesome defensive coordinator for us. And just from the summer and stuff, I, I think he's going to be uh, even better at, at offense for us. So I'm uh, really excited about that. Um, we have a new defensive coordinator. Uh, Jake Simon is uh, joining us. Uh, he uh, coached uh, over at uh, Athens for the last four years. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another um, graduate of Lake Orion, James Cathcart, uh, mm-hmm. does our D-line for us. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's uh, one thing uh, as a staff and everything, just even from like varsity down, we always kind of pride ourselves on. We have a, a good amount of, you know, people that just grew up with Lake Orion football, played Lake Orion football. and. Um, teachers in the school and so I'm really looking forward to it. What are the goals of the sub varsity? I'll start with Coach Shabrowski then I'll go with Coach Blackstock. Honestly our our goal is number one to retain players and Mm -hmm. help kids learn football. Um, I I don't you know like I I think everyone goes into the season we we want to win games that's that's always important I think that's good for your team morale but I, I think overall we, we want to develop great kids on and off the field mm-hmm. and, um, and, you know, like teach that uh, ability to work together. And, you know, when you have a lot of great talent that's working together and has a team first mentality, you know, good things happen and those wins usually take care of themselves. So. Yeah, I agree with Dan, you know, from the youth league, middle school, freshman JV, uh, varsity, number one is we want to develop young men mm-hmm. uh, in, into great great men uh, to, to join our community and uh, as they get older you know and we feel football is a real tool for helping develop that um, you know the the more you move up the ladder in, in age yes winning becomes more important you know where varsity you know win, winning games is important mm-hmm. to uh, to this community to our administration and to us as a program um, but we don't ever want to lose sight of you know the real purpose of high school athletics of developing young men. Let's talk about the schedule. Um, in my 20 years of being involved in Lake Orion football, I would say this is one of the toughest schedules we've had. We've got some very quality programs. Open up week one against Utica Eisenhower. 
Week two, you go to North Farmington. North Farmington is a very solid program. Absolutely. Well coached also with that Harrison coaching staff over there. Yep. Uh, week three, at Southfield A&T. Uh, week four, home against Oxford. Week five, home West Bloomfield. Week six, home Stony Creek. Week seven, at Clarkston. Week eight, at home, homecoming against Seaholm. And then week nine, at Saline. Those are some really, really good, strong, quality programs on that schedule. Um, it's an awesome schedule, isn't it? What do you think? I, I do. I think it's awesome. I mean, that's, that's what we want, um, is the most challenging schedule we can have, because that's what I feel like it's really all about, and our, our kids have embraced, and I know our coaching staff has embraced, stepping out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself. And, um, you know, I keep, I, I've said the word challenge, and, and I should probably change that to opportunity. It's great opportunity for our kids to show um, how well they play together as a team and, and how well they play as individuals. You know, I, I did hear that the SEC is looking to bring in the OAA Red <laughs> also, um, just to make it a little more challenging. <laughs> Kidding there. But uh, no, we're excited about the schedule. A lot of people talk about you know it being one of the most challenging in, in school history, and you know how tough it's going to be. But really, we, we look at it from the opposite view of it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to play in games where they're they're blowouts. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be challenged, and uh, that schedule does prepare you for the playoffs. And if you do qualify for the playoffs after playing that schedule, you you absolutely deserve to be there. There's no second guessing that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love our schedule. I think it's a real chance to compete and just, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, Coach Blacksack said, to find out a lot about yourself. You know, when you're in when you're in those games that are tight and close at the end, I think it just it, it gives you a real opportunity to dig deep and just find out some of those character traits that you know you might not have known you had. So, um, I'd like Coach Blackstock said, I, I enjoy a competitive schedule over a schedule where. You know, you never want to walk into a game like thinking that, oh, this should be a win. Like, I, I, I like the fact that when we go in, we, we know that we're going to have to give our best. And I mean, at the sub varsity level, there, there are games where we give our best and you still don't come away with a win. But it, it's mm -hmm. it's knowing that you got out there and you competed and you gave everything you had. And that's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all you can ask from anybody. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's there's been a lot of great games in in my memory. I mean, I, it would be hard to name one, right? But I, when I think back, whether it was win or lose, doesn't affect whether it's one of the greatest games in my memory and mind. It was the challenge of it. It's those close ones, you know. Um, I think back to beating Wald Lake Central in in overtime in a playoff game. Two thousand two. Yeah, when Roger Allison yep. intercepts a pass down in the end zone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we won. It was great, but it was just the thrill and the excitement of mm -hmm. being in that close game, the Cast Tech semifinal game, of winning it on really the last drive and Clarkston, having to. Clarkston, our senior get, year. Clarkston, your Obviously senior year. Them twice. Yeah, season. you know the West Bloomfield in two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wanted to win that game, mm -hmm. um, as much as I've ever wanted to win a game, but. Five overtimes, back and forth, like could have went either way. That that thrill, that excitement, that challenge, mm -hmm. that's what I think is really great about playing playing sports. You know, not the thirty-five nothing win, right. which doesn't challenge anyone. Right. You know? So we're excited about it. Right. What do you think, Dan? Uh, the, just kind of uh, wrapping that up. Again, we're we're excited. I think. Uh, when, you know, you went over the varsity schedule. Um, obviously, we're going to play the sub varsity schedule. Um, not all those teams right, that you mentioned are, are going to have team. freshman teams. But mm -hmm. um, one thing I do appreciate about us is that you know we'll go you know east coast to west coast, mm -hmm. trying to find a, a great freshman game for us. You've uh, had some crazy get down ones. to uh, even the you know the Michigan southern border to You've had some go crazy play ones. some games. I remember yeah. you played Gibraltar Carlson <laughs> yep. a couple years ago. You played Wald Lake Northern. It was a great game against yeah. Wald Lake Northern. Yeah. Um, those are some good games, so some good opportunities. Yeah, that's what that's what we enjoy, just a, a chance to compete. I know you take the approach of one game at a time, so and um, and I know that still. But any of the any any team that stands out, particularly the um, that that's the the not considered the usual because every year we play West Bloomfield, Clarkson, Oxford, Southfield. Uh, I think um, Utica Eisenhower week one, obviously, there's a lot of history between Lake Orion and Ike, and it's an exciting rivalry. It's also nice to have it at, um, at, at, have it home this year. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been here 24 years, and 
the number of times we'd played Ike, it, it it's typically always a one score game. Mm -hmm. And so many of those games have been won on the final drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you know, seven three games, yep. seven nothing, 14 seven, you know, uh, so you know that you're gonna get a battle with them and, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. Non-schedule North Farmington is exciting to add. Um, you know, with, with their staff, Coach Herstein doing a great job. Um, and like you had already mentioned, a lot of the, the Farmington Hills Harrison mm -hmm. staff, they've got things rolling down there and, and they are, they're gonna be a challenge. Um, you know, and then Celine. You know, you throw Celine at the end of the season, right before the playoffs, right. and, and hopefully we're getting into the playoffs. But another outstanding program um, that has great players and is just so well coached. I've, I've seen them on film a number of times over the years from scouting. You know, teams that they've played, and we've had common opponents. So, right. yeah, you know, those those are going to be really special non-conference games. And you throw in Seaholm, mm -hmm. um, just a physical, physical team. They work that, hard. That they're works really hard. You know, th too. they're going to show up with not a lot of kids on the sideline and not a lot of kids on the bus. But I tell you what, every one of those kids will play their heart out. And what they do offensively poses a, a challenge for everyone they play because what they do is, is so disciplined, so physical right. and so unique. And, and Coach DeWalt just does an outstanding job with those guys down there. You know, what about our league with the West Bloomfield? Southfield, Oxford, Clarkston, and Stony Creek. You know, every one of those is uh, is a juggernaut, mm -hmm. right? Uh, every one of those is a rivalry game. Sure, you know, our community puts a little more premium probably on the blue and gold mm -hmm. games of, uh, you know, the, the Team Oxford. and The Team O and the Team C. Yep, Team O and Team C, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a ton of respect for those programs, those coaches, and those kids um, because, you know, you look at it, and I think all our kids are really similar. You know, it's just mm -hmm. a couple miles each way uh, and those are always special to our community but man every game in the OA Red really is a rivalry to us and that's why we do have to go one game at a time mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's, it's one play at a time. Mm -hmm. um, one team that's going to come in the OA next winter is Harper Woods. What's your take on that? Yeah you know I, I think from what I hear the OAA is, is always looking to expand mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to increase the number of schools which I think is a great idea mm -hmm. because then it just creates more opportunity for us to schedule in a very different way, mm -hmm. which we don't have right now. Um, and, and they're another outstanding program, so it just makes sense to bring in another great school, you know, mm -hmm. athletically and academically. Mm -hmm. Same question. What do you think about Harper Woods? Uh, honestly, like, uh, you know, like, again, we take them kind of uh, one game at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not overly familiar with Harper Woods, but uh, again, a chance to compete against somebody new is we'll, we'll take it. All right. Um, what are your expectations for the season, Dan? I'm going to start with you. Um, you know what? To, just to, to build that team first mentality, I think uh, coming in from middle school, um, we're down to two teams at middle school, a green and a white. We used to have three middle school teams, but we combined them into two. And just, again, just, you know, I think, you know, we're, we're going to have talent. We're in Lake Orion. We know that we're going to have talent. We're going to face a lot of talented teams. But, mm -hmm. again, it, it comes down to those those teams that are special or those ones with talent that, you know, aren't me first people. They're, mm -hmm. they're that team first. And I think that's something that we really try to develop is that that mindset that we're going into this together and you know the outcome is important but like the guy next to me is even more important and I think uh, you know coach Blackstock's done an awesome job of bringing in Kevin Grammons from Target Mentality and just really working with the kids and developing that that strong mindset um, that uh, you know sometimes gets I think overlooked in sports you know like mm -hmm. a lot of people like look at how talented somebody is but they don't really focus on like how much you need that that tuned in mindset to really compete at your highest level yeah you know our, our motto for this year as a program is just a simple one word reach because we feel that that's what we're trying to get kids to do and even our coaches to do is is reach and reach has so many meanings you know reach farther than you thought you could could reach go harder than you thought you could go reach also means you know extending a hand and helping someone mm -hmm. reach is also men of others. yeah men of other stuff mm -hmm. you know reach is also making that connection mm -hmm. reaching or, or getting a point across to people and, and making that human connection which we feel all of those are important to our season and our kids uh, on and off the field 
Any final thoughts, gentlemen? I'm, I'm really excited, you know, about the season. I'm really excited about uh, the direction of the program because we have such a great community. You know, I, I, I have to mention our youth league, mm -hmm. you know, which often kind of gets forgotten about when we're talking about high school football. But those mm -hmm. guys, those coaches, those kids are just as important as our varsity team because they're going to be our varsity team yep. in a few short years. And excited about the, the work and the leadership that's gone on down there over the last three, four, five years, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where our, our third and fourth graders uh, are going to play a, a different game this fall. They're going to play rookie tackle which nice. is, is still tackle football, mm -hmm. but the field is smaller. It's right. between the numbers. It's from the 40-yard line and in, right. and it's seven players on the field at a time, um, but it's still tackle. So there's less kids on the field. Our teams are smaller. Uh, we're going to have four or five teams. We've got 50 kids, and mm -hmm. you know, ideally we'd have 10 to 12 kids on a team, so there's more opportunity for them to play on a smaller field. Nice. Um, you know, just like you look at the other sports, soccer mm -hmm. starts out smaller and grows bigger every two years. Baseball starts out with t-ball and then coach pitch and then machine pitch before they get to kid pitch. And so we're trying to install a game that has a progression mm -hmm. to it and a bridge to it. So super excited about that going on down there. And then our fifth and sixth graders will start playing the more traditional 11 on 11 game and mm -hmm. middle school will do the same. Nice. Any final thoughts, Ian? Uh, again, I think uh, you know when you think of Lake Gore and you think of Dragons, it's a it's a one mascot town. So mm -hmm. uh, you know when Coach Blackstock brings up you know the youth league, there isn't a different name for the youth league. They're they're the Dragons. So right. um, that's something that's uh, has always been important to me, um, especially in the community. And uh, I think the last thing I would want to say is thank you. So thanks yeah. for uh, thank having you, us and uh, highlighting know, us. And, and, and the final thing I would say yeah. is I I would encourage people to come out to a game. Mm -hmm. uh, and come see what Lake Orion football is about because it's not just Lake Orion football. You know, Friday mm -hmm. nights have become a true event in the community, mm -hmm. you know, with our, our outstanding cheer team, you know, that is, you know, in the state finals and uh, every year, uh, our award-winning band program that is just outstanding. And you can hear them in the background, which yep. tells me, hey, it's, it's football, it's football season. season. You get the drum line going. You start hearing the drum line. Yeah. Uh, we got our robotics team out here mm -hmm. shooting their cannon, t-shirt cannon off. Um, the dance team. The dance team the is out team. here. There's just so much going on. And so many of our Lake Orion High School students showcased with their own unique talents mm -hmm. uh, and being able to perform and, and show to the community what they do. Um, so I, I really encourage everyone to come out to to a game it's a community event awesome and if you can't come to a game watch it on or on on tv we've got some two great announcers to announce <laughs> absolutely and, CC. and um but i definitely would encourage you guys to come out to dragon stadium it's definitely a great atmosphere as coach black Sox said it's it's not just a football game it's very pretty much an event yep so thank you guys for thank coming you on. love coming on man i look thank forward to so it every much. year thank you thank for you having so us so much for coming on coach and Ruffy. all right that will do it for the lake orion football preview show i would encourage you guys to come watch us on orion on tv and also wdbc as well all right you guys take care have a great day and go dragons